Today, we are looking for the best tapas. So first, a quick road trip to Cavite to try out a really great eatery that's popular there. Then we're gonna come back to the studio and test different recipes to try to figure out how to make the best tapa at home. We have been spending a lot of time in Cavite. This is actually part of our overall Cavite series. So if you haven't checked it out, we have a bunch of videos about the province and all the beautiful food that you can find here. But now we're headed to find the best tapsilog in Cavite. We heard a lot about this place and tapa is something that is done quite traditionally everywhere in the Philippines, but done very differently. We are gonna delve into how to do it traditionally, but first I wanted to kind of see how other cooks around the country do it. And I heard of this place in Cavite that does something very special that just makes it even more delicious than what you're used to. What I love about coming to Cavite is that you'll always find really cool hidden spots and we've heard a lot about this place online and it comes really highly recommended so I'm really excited to try it. I see the sign, it's called Hidden Tapsihan. I love simple names. So most people here come in the morning, usually? Usually at night, huh? at dinner. Because when people think of like tapsilog and everything, it's breakfast food. Yeah. Pero dito. Ah, dito. All, all day fair. Oh, yeah. I love that. Pag gabi, dalawang ganito. Yung puno talaga siya. Pero mostly yan, lalo sa gabi, kahit bagong saing lang, after mainin, dudurugin agad yung isa sa nag. Ito yung mabilis eh. As in, umuusok pa siya, galing yun dyan. So, kailangan special yung bigas mo para ganong klase yung hiwa-hiwalay. And how many plates of tapa do you think you sell every day? More or less 200 plates. Oh, wow. A day, yeah. And then how many grams for one plate? The tapa? Yeah. 100. 100. Okay, 100. so it's a lot of, yeah. a lot of beef. Is that your most popular yeah. item sa food menu? Yung tosino, oh, main namin din yung tosino. Then the lips and kawali. I know you can't tell me the exact recipe, <laughs> but what's the secret to making a really good tapa? Yung tapa namin, actually, one, and siya, fresh na galing from slaughterhouse. Yeah. Ginayat. Tapos din deliver sa amin. Unlike yung mga nabibiling frozen, Sa amin, fresh talaga siya. Okay. Nilalaga pa namin. Oh. It's probably mga three hours na okay. no fire. And that's good enough now? Yes, tapos after that, pinapry namin. Ah, so parang you boil it yeah. with the soy sauce? Well, yes. I mean, vinegar, vinegar, vinegar. whatever your secret yeah. is. <laughs> okay, that's different. That was... it, most people will just get the beef, marinate, cook. That was oh, it's a little dry, yeah. it's not yeah. as soft. Uh, unlike salmon. I think he just told us it's the secret, guys. Thank you very much, appreciate it. <laughs> so we're gonna open a Topsy Log around the street. No, I'm kidding. Some secret pa sa mingo sa'yo. Okay. Ayan. Madami siyang ano, marami siyang oil. Parang evenly yung cook ng ano. Hindi yung tong side na to, maganda po. So parang hindi lang sear lang. Yes. Hindi fry siya, pero Pero ano. Hindi parang hanggang um, crispy, crispy, no. no. Okay, yeah. yeah. Kailangan yeah. juicy lang siya. Ah, so parang confit. Yeah. Okay. Tapos yung egg also, lots of oil. Yes. Get that perfect cheese. Yeah. Ooh, I've learned so much. <laughs> Erwin Tapasi, Erwin's <laughs> hidden <laughs> Tapasi <laughs> hand coming <laughs> soon <laughs> in a town near you. Passing? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Thank man. you very much. So Thank much. you, Erwin. So Thank fun. you for dropping by. For sure. Oh, yeah. For sure. Hi, 
I absolutely love menus like this. Like it really reminds me of my childhood. You have everything from tapa, you have longanisa, you have lumpiang Shanghai, breaded pork chop, dangi nambagongas, lechon koalis. It's kind of like all the breakfast hits that you can ask for in the Philippines, which is always amazing. And seeing how this was put together in the kitchen kind of just shows you the variances in terms of how you can make tapa at home, which is always great to see other people's styles of how they do it. Now I heard that the sauce is highly coveted and that a lot of people actually come here and try to steal this whole jug. Hint, hint, I might. Let's try it. Oh, nice. It's a really sharp kind of like white onion flavor. The chili comes through, it's nice and peppery. You know, give you that tingling feeling around your mouth right away. But it does have some sugar in it, so there's a lot of sweetness in it, uh, which hopefully complements with everything in here. Perfectly cooked, glossy egg. And then the amount of oil that the tapa was cooked in can only mean good things ahead. I'll try it first without the sauce. Mmm. First of all, I love that the rice has some salt in it. I think a really good key to garlic rice is making sure that you're adding salt to your garlic or to your rice when cooking it, so that when you bite through it, you get those little crystals of salt, and that really comes through nicely. Technically, you're not supposed to be eating tapa alone. Tapa is one thing that is a quote-unquote preserved, dried, salted food originally, so it's something that you need to eat with something else because it is quite intense. But here, it's really nice and tender. And you kind of get a hint that it was kind of fried in a lot of oil because you get that almost confit-like flavor that really comes through. But I like that it's kept not sweet at all, which means the vinegar should pair perfectly with it. Let's try the whole experience now. I have my tapa, my rice, my egg, and my suka. Mmm. I can see why a lot of people flock to this place. Here you have nice chunks of the meat. You have nice chunks of the fat as well, which really makes it feel substantial in your mouth. Yum. I am absolutely plowing through this. That is proper delicious. After hearing that story, seeing that process, I think I have the inspiration and experience I need to kind of dig a little deeper into the dish and figure out how to make it at home. left with rice. I feel like I need an extra order of tapa. So that was a really cool experience. First time I ever saw tapa made that way and I thought it was very eye-opening in terms of just how many different types of tapa you can make and how every carinderia or every restaurant probably has their own style and also when you're at home, sweet, spicy, not sweet, you know there's so many different ways to do it so there are no wrong ways. Today I want to try out to do kind of like the most quote unquote traditional tapa, as well as a more Chinese style of tapa, and then we're gonna finish off with what we can consider kind of like a premium tapa. Very simple, all we need to first start to do is marinate everything in some good quality soy sauce and vinegar, so we're gonna start with that. For our regular tapas and our Chinese style tapas, we are gonna be using right here, um, this is a rump cut that we've asked our butcher to basically cut thinly into breakfast steaks. By the way, if I say tapa, I'm gonna say tapa. Okay, people are gonna call me out for this. Tapa. Tapa is nothing without good quality soy sauce and vinegar. Marcapina soy sauce is absolutely beautiful. It has a nice saltiness to it. So just make sure you're measuring out when you're using salty ingredients, obviously. They have a great brand heritage and have been around in the Philippines for a long, long time. Uh, so these are the two products that we're gonna be mainly using today to make our dishes. Um, so I got a bowl out. Uh, we're gonna start very simply with some cloves of garlic. So we have some marcapina soy sauce here, and then a splash of vinegar, a little bit of brown sugar. Mix that together with our garlic. So that's our marinade for the traditional tapa. Next, let's prep our meat. So I'm gonna start off with our rump cut, dump that into our soy mix, and you know, 30 minutes is good enough, but if you want to do overnight, you can as well. Perfect, so that's for our traditional tapa, and that's ready to go. Now for our premium tapa, exact same thing. Our marcapina soy sauce, splash of vinegar, bit of sugar, garlic. 
Make sure you always dissolve that sugar in the mix. And I'm gonna be making this with a beautiful cut of Balzico beef strip loin. I mean, look at that, beautiful. And because it has that nice fat cap, I thought it'd be really cool to actually cook this in a similar way that we saw in Hidden Topsy, um, in terms of like almost deep frying it or confiting it rather in oil, but I'm gonna be using some lard to see if kind of like that heightens the experience and the flavor altogether. Since this is a more expensive cut of beef, we're gonna cut this into slightly larger chunks, but also nothing too close to a salpicao. Nice little slices. That goes into our marinade. Same exact thing here, 30 minutes. And then last but not least, we're gonna be making our Chinese version. When I put those air marks, it's basically because it's, it's really not Chinese. It's just the technique of velveting is. Velveting is a process that helps um, especially when you're making like stir fries and stuff, just make the meat really nice and tender. And it's a really simple process of just getting some cuts of beef that are usually a little tougher, and then mixing that with some baking soda. Beef goes into the bowl, baking soda, and I'm just gonna use my hands here to make sure it's all over every cut of beef. And I'm not gonna marinate this yet. I'm gonna let this stand for about 30 minutes as well. One thing I really loved about Hidden uh, Tapsi, it's their Sao Sao one was really good. They actually mentioned that people actually try to steal um, the Sao Sao one and it was sweet, which was quite nice. So usually when you make Sao Sao one, uh, for tapa, for example, it's garlic, vinegar, and maybe some chilies or whatever else you wanna add to it. Um, but here I'm actually gonna add some sugar as well. So I've got some jalapenos. Obviously you can use some bird's eye chilies or some local Filipino labuyo chilies if you want. So a bit of sugar with our marca pina vinegar. Dissolve all that, our jalapenos, and some garlic. Now that everything is marinated, let's make our quote unquote traditional tapa. Your original tapa was probably closer to like a, a beef jerky or an animal turkey. So to try to replicate that, we're gonna put that on a dehydrator rack and then we're gonna dehydrate it for about two, three hours and see where we get. And just like if you were making jerky, kind of just spread that onto our racks. Go up to 70. This is the beef that was velveted with baking soda. Now we can go ahead and marinate it. So garlic, splash of our marcapina vinegar, and some marcapina soy sauce. We're gonna marinate this for a further 30 minutes. While waiting, we can cook our premium version. So this is pure, it smells pure, pork lard. It's just, it's probably one of the first kind of oils we used in the Philippines and Philippine cooking a lot. So let's go ahead and start melting down our lard and then obviously we're gonna cook some eggs because we're making lots of different types of tapsi looks today. Start putting these in. So we don't wanna deep fry them, we wanna slow cook them slow because we kinda wanna just to confit in that pork fat. You can see the garlic is not burnt. I think we took it out at the exact right time. Okay, quickly we're gonna cook the other tapa. So just to remind you, this is the tapa that's been uh, velveted. We're still gonna use a proper amount of oil, obviously. Um, and then we're gonna start cooking this down here. So once these are done, we'll transfer out, get the oil hot again, and then do the next batch. Okay, time for our more premium version. Let's start with the velveting. Already I can tell it's much kind of more tender to the touch. Not dry at all. It is still a rump cut, so you still have that chew. Well, that works really well. Spread out that egg a little bit. I mean, this tastes like the tapa I grew up eating, but the velveting makes sure it doesn't dry out, which is nice. Let's try it now with the sao sao one. That's a solid recipe. I would actually say, for anyone making tapa at home, from now on, I'm always gonna velvet. It makes such a huge difference texturally. Next, let's move on to the premium one. Let's break all that in. That chunky piece of meat right there. 
Oh my God. There's a, a slight hint of porkiness there. Like when you make a chinkawali or pork chop, that flavor's there. Because obviously you cook it in fat, but the beef really comes through. Make sure I get lots of chilies in there. Three hours later, we have tapa jerky. Look at this. So it's not completely dry, but I think this is probably as dry as it would get when they would sun dry it. It's like a tapsy log party. I don't want this to become like a beef tapa chicharron, so we're not gonna go too high on the oil. This should be really quick since there's literally no moisture left in most of these cuts. Not even a minute, and these look good to go. Actually, these would be fantastic fried in lard as well. You see the garlic that's in there is not black, it's not overcooked, so it's not gonna be too bitter. Come to think of it, I've tried tapa like this before. Like this tastes proper legit. Dip it in the sauce. Mmm. If I were to choose my favorite one, I'd put familiarity first with the velveting one, just because the technique is so sound and really does create like a beautiful soft dish, even with a cheaper cut of meat. The premium one obviously is gonna be really delicious. And this one just feels really authentic. Like it feels like it, it really brought me down memory lane with this flavor and texture. All of them are fantastic. <laughs>